It is just coming up to five minutes to ten, and that means it is time once again for a Tea Time with Matt's bedtime story. And it's a very special one uh, because we are, of course, telling the story of Christmas. So get yourself snuggled down, grab a cup of cocoa, and listen to a heartwarming tale of Christmas. It's Tea Time with Matt's bedtime story. In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. And the earth was without form and void, like Basildon on a Saturday evening. And God said, Let there be light. And there was light. And God saw the light, and it was good. And then God received his quarterly electricity bill, and it was not good. And so God visited Go Compare, and was able to switch his electricity supplier in as little as two to three weeks. And that was better, but still was not good. And because of this, God decided to take all of his pent-up rage and frustration on mankind. And then God had a little nap and calmed down. When he awoke, God saw the damage he had wrought to humanity, and it was not good. And God said, Oh dear, I lost my temper a bit there, didn't I? I should probably do something nice to make it all a bit better. And so God sent the angel Gabriel to the town of Nazareth in Galilee with a message for a virgin named Mary. She was engaged to Joseph from the family of King David. The angel greeted Mary and said, You are truly blessed. The Lord is with you. Mary was confused by the angel's words and said, Listen, mate, I haven't got any spare change. Please leave me alone or I'll call the centurions. Do not be afraid, said the angel. God is pleased with you and you will have a son. His name will be Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of God Most High. The Lord God will make him king as his ancestor David was. He will rule the people of Israel forever and his kingdom will never end. Mary asked the angel, Have you been puffing on frankincense or something? I'm not married. The angel answered, The Holy Spirit will come down to you and God's power will come over you. So your child will be called the Holy Son of God. Mary said, As chat up lines go, mate, that's probably the first one I've heard. Bugger off and she stormed off to carry on with her shopping. Later that day, Mary took a pregnancy test and had to have a very awkward conversation with her fiancé about Immaculate Conception and plead with him not to make her go on the Jeremy Kyle show. (laughs) About nine months later, Emperor Augustus of Rome gave orders for the names of all the people to be listed in record books. Everyone had to go to their own hometown to be listed because the Romans love their damn lists. So Joseph had to leave Nazareth in Galilee and go to Bethlehem in Judea. Long ago, Bethlehem had been King David's hometown, and Joseph went there because he was from David's family. Although I'm pretty sure we already covered that. Mary went with him because she was sick of her mum telling her how irresponsible she was for going off and getting herself a bun in the oven. And so Joseph and Mary travelled to Bethlehem. Joseph warped and Mary rode upon the back of a donkey. And Joseph said, Hey, love... How about letting me have a go on the donkey for a bit, eh? And Mary said, Oh dear God, Joseph, I think my water's just broke. Oh boy. And so they arrived in the town of Bethlehem, where Joseph inquired about rooms at the Premier Inn and the Travel Lodge, both of which were full on account of everyone planning ahead and booking online. And Joseph said to Mary, Why don't we just go down to the maternity unit at Bethlehem General Hospital? And Mary said, Don't be such a pillock, Joseph. I'm not giving birth in an NHS hospital. I'll end up with MRSA. I'd sooner give birth in a stable. Oh. (laughs) Funny you should mention that, said Joseph. And so Mary gave birth to her firstborn son in a stable. She dressed him in baby clothes and laid him on a bed of hay. And the horse that was sharing the stable said, Oi, do you mind? That's my dinner you're laying your infant on. And Joseph cried out, A talking horse! It is a miracle! God be praised! (laughs) That night in the fields near Bethlehem, some shepherds were guarding their sheep. An angel came down to them from the Lord, and the brightness of the Lord's glory flashed around them. The shepherds were frightened. What the bloody hell is that? They shouted. But the angel said, Fear not, for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy. And the shepherds were relieved, and one said, Does that mean my wife's agreed to the divorce? The angel... (laughs) (laughs) We're going to hell. Definitely. 
the angel tutted and said, You're not taking this seriously. This very day in King David's hometown, a saviour was born for you. He is Christ the Lord. You will know who he is because you will find him dressed in baby clothes and lying on a bed of hay. And the shepherds said to each other, Let us go to Bethlehem and see what the Lord has told us about. They hurried off and found Mary and Joseph, and they saw the baby laying on a bed of hay. And Mary said, Oi, bugger off! I've just given birth and I'm trying to sleep! And the shepherds told Mary and Joseph what the angel had said. And Mary said, I don't care what a bloody angel told you. This stable is private property. Now piss off! As the shepherds returned to their sheep, they were praising God and saying wonderful things about him. Everything they had seen and heard was just as the angel had said, apart from the bit about Christ's mother being a stroppy teenager. When Jesus was born in the village of Bethlehem in Judea, I'm pretty sure we already covered this, Herod was king. And during this time, some wise men came from the east to Jerusalem and said, Where is the child born to be king of the Jews? We saw his star in the east and have come to worship him. When King Herod heard about this, he was confused and so was everyone else in Jerusalem because that's a lot of information to infer from a giant ball of gas thousands of light years away. Herod brought together the chief priests and the teachers of the law of Moses and asked them, where will the Messiah be born? And they told him, he will be born in Bethlehem, just as the prophet wrote, Bethlehem in the land of Judea, You are very important among the towns of Judea. From your town will come a leader who will be like a shepherd for my people of Israel. And Herod said, now hang on a minute. First of all, who is this prophet bloke? And the chief priests and the teachers of the law of Moses looked at each other and said, um, do you know we never thought to ask? Herod called in the wise men and asked them when they had first seen the star. And the wise men shared all they knew, as they really got asked about their work, being as they spent most of their time in the desert looking at the sky and being wise about things. And so Herod told them, go to Bethlehem and search carefully for the child. As soon as you find him, let me know. I want to go and worship him too. And so the wise men listened to what the king said and then left bit ungrateful and the star they had seen in the east went on ahead of them until it stopped over the place where the child was the wise men were thrilled and excited to see the star as from an astronomical point of view stars don't normally behave that way when the men went into the house and saw the child with mary his mother they knelt down and worshipped him and mary said what is this jerusalem station no visitors go away And the wise men said, but we have bought gifts for the child of gold, frankincense, and a 20 pound Debenhams gift card. Sweet. (laughs) And so Mary and Joseph took the gifts and told the wise men to leave or they would set the donkey on them. (laughs) Later, later, the wise men were warned in a dream that the M25 would be an absolute nightmare. And so they went back home by another road. As the years passed, we saw Jesus' true glory, the glory of the only Son of the Father. From him all the kindness and all of the truth of God have come down to us. And Jesus spoke to the people. He said, I am the light for the world. Follow me and you won't be walking in the dark. You will have the light that gives life. And God said, Jesus, did you leave the bloody light on again? <laughs> And that was Tea Time with Matt's story of Christmas. I am definitely going to hell. Yes, we are. (laughs) are I'll be there with you. Oh, God. Oh, blimey. Okay. Oh, dear. Claire says the internet's gone walkie. Sorry, Claire. Uh, and Lovejoy says, oh my god, I love this version. The banker says, I was born in a stable. Oh no, Dunstable. I was born in Dunstable. (laughs) Oh dear lord. Okay. (laughs) Well, what's the difference? Yeah, we're we're definitely going to hell, folks. (laughs) It's... (laughs) 